Welcome back in continuation with our last lecture on dynamic pricing where we learned that dynamic pricing is very natural and it has uh, it is convenient to implement fixed pricing that is why people were going for fixed pricing but because of internet now again dynamic pricing has become a reality. So, in this context we saw there are many dynamic pricing models out of which we have chosen uh, to discuss about auctions. In today's class we are going to uh, learn about uh, different kinds of auction, how to classify auctions and look at few uh, applications if possible. Now, what are auctions? Auctions are again very oldest form of market. In fact, if you uh, look at the history probably you can have the evidence of auction being happening even before uh, uh, Christ even I mean the it has a written history of at least 500 BC and the auctions like that of your reverse auction or auctions at eBay and similar such sites are the recent phenomena which is uh, which means this auction has always been there and will also will be there. This is because this is this as we know this provides a fast degree differentiation where actually the price can be decided based on the demand and supply conditions. Now, example of this auction is not limited to online buying. In fact, starting from your spectrum auction for which there has been certain, I mean the even in India people were talking about these auctions and all for selling spectrum and this selling uh, sp um, spectrum through auction is very old. In fact, it uh, started with uh, uh, in fact this uh, selling spectrum is started with uh, selling of uh, in 1995 where uh, um, federal communication commission conducted 87 spectrum auctions which raised over 60 billion dollar for the United States. However, if the auctions are not designed properly, there are some failure stories of auction as well. You can uh, do make some readings about that how this Vikre auction so called it is a very important auction phenomena, uh, auction type, auction mechanism which has failed once, uh, failed once in 1990 where the winning bid was a very high price and the lower second winning bid was very low price. In fact, if you uh, look at the uh, theoretical interest on auction around 1970 when uh, the US again decided to, um, to sell the drilling rights of its coastal area this for oil exploration economics economists were hired by the organization to design the bidding strategy to participate in this auction. So, let us try to classify this auction. Auction can be classified in many different ways. We are going to look at each of them separately. So, first one is you can have a classification based on the resources. You identify the set of resources over which the negotiation is to be conducted. Either it can be single item, single unit, it can be single item, multiple units, it can be multi unit auction, it can be multiple item auction. Now, what is a single item, single unit? Let us say a uh, old painting is getting sold single item single unit organization 
is buying some uh, important equipment using auction single item single unit there can be single item multiple units organization is deciding to buy multiple uh, unit of of certain item let's say some biscuit company is trying to buy 100 quintal of sugar through your suction same item multiple units okay then you can have multiple items different items are being tried to buy or sell together in the first case it was single item with multiple units here come you, you have a scenario in which you, ha you are trying to buy or sell multiple items together so when you try to buy this multiple um, items together this particular kind of auction is called combinatorial auction again it can be made complicated multiple items and multiple units this can be multi unit combinatorial auction similarly you can also have items with multiple um, attributes the besides price the other attributes such as various quality parameters etc can be associated to make the buying and selling possible so which means those attributes has to be now converted in terms of price or some other mechanism has to be adopted to implement such auctions okay then auctions can also be classified based on the market structure now what is this market structure all about you can have one seller and multiple buyer which is the traditional form of auction in the traditional form of auction usually when uh, some uh, some house or some property is getting auctioned or some very um, precious good is getting auction so you ha you can have forward auction one by one seller is selling and multiple buyers compete among themselves to buy your auctions in ebay etc are one seller multiple buyer auctions as well then recently because of the internet it has possible uh, to have auctions in which you have one buyer and multiple sellers traditionally to purchase any items uh, in an organization there used to be bidding and uh, a tendering in that tendering the buyer expresses um, his requirement and in fact when we studied about e-procurement when uh, that time we discussed about all these issues the buyer express expresses its interest and requests for quotation then many uh, um, sellers respond so if you have one buyer and multiple seller it is called reverse auction it is not a very traditional form of auction it is a recent phenomena because of this traditionally this used to be tendering process now because in tendering process it is a one time submission of bids now because of online environment now it is possible that it can happen in multiple rounds and this the uh, the sellers can compete among themselves so in that case it is called reverse auction otherwise if this all, all submit their bids at a time it is called e-bidding system but anyway now we are talking about auctions so it is called reverse auction then if you have multiple buyers and multiple sellers this kind of situation happen in case of stock markets so in such stock markets if we have multiple sellers and multiple buyers competing among themselves to buy and sell securities financial uh, securities so those are called 
double auctions. Okay? So, based on the classification of uh, this classification is based on the market structure. Next class, next classification is based on the bidding rules, the kind of bidding rule um, used for bid evaluation. Some auctions can be ascending bid auctions. In case of ascending bid auctions, which happen in case of forward auction, the in forward auction you have one seller multiple buyer, right. So, one buyer states one price, then it is outbid by the second bidder, then second bidder uh, price is again outbid by another bidder and so on. Then again first bidder may try to outbid. So, the bid value keeps increasing. Somebody is telling I will be buying the product at 10,000, next person is telling 10,500, next person is telling 10,000, uh, 11,000 and so on. So, in this uh, situation the buyers compete among themselves and increase the price. Okay. So, uh, your English auction is of English auction is basically your traditional auction. Uh, why it is called English auction? Because in basically it is because of the they call it English outcry auctions. You must have seen uh, you must have seen that when in a traditional auction house something gets sold, they sell they say uh, let us say 5 lakh, 5 lakh, 5 lakh, then somebody outbids with 10 lakhs, then somebody. So, it is somebody actually stands in the uh, in, in front of a uh, of a crowd and shouts. So, this is called English outcry auction. So, it is basically one ascending bid auction. Then next is your, uh, uh, okay. so here in this ascending bid auction, there are two important issues. One, depending on the nature of the product, some initial price is set. Below that price, people are not allowed to bid. Let us say house is getting auctioned. You cannot offer 10 rupees for the house, right? There will be some minimum base price above which there will be auction. So, that reserve price must be decided in such auctions. Then another issue here is the increment. Let us say house is getting sold and uh, its initial price is let us say 50 lakhs. Next increment, the increment on this 50 lakhs rupees, uh, 50 lakh 50 rupees, increment of 50 rupees looks ridiculous here. So, minimum increment may be 1 lakh or 2 lakhs or 5 lakhs as, as uh, that, that is to be decided based on the situation. Now, if uh, uh, um, if let us say some uh, some other item like like uh, like a laptop is getting sold in eBay. Initial price it started with 20,000. So, increment can be in hundreds or in thousands, it cannot be in lakhs, right. So, therefore, uh, this minimum increment has to be decided in such auctions as well. Then, next is your descending bid auction. The descending bid auctions also have a name they are called Dutch auctions. In this Dutch auctions, uh, this Dutch auctions actually named after the Dutch flower auction in which it is again one seller multiple buyers, but that seller himself starts at a very high price. In case of flower as the time progresses the, the flower, the quality of flower deteriorates. It becomes at some point of time it is it becomes actually you have to throw the throw the flower. It is no more people can take. So, as the, the more fresh it is price is very high. So, initially the buyer will be asking for a very high price. As the time progresses the buyer himself decreases the price. When the buyer decreases the price the moment one person responds 
the item is sold. It is just the opposite of that of uh, English auction. The pr uh, the the buyer uh, the buyer starts with some minimum price, then bidders keep on increasing the price. And the moment no further increase happen, the item is sold to the person who provides the highest price. In case of Dutch auction, you start the buyer starts with a high price and keeps himself decreasing the price till one person responds and takes the product. So, this is called Dutch auction. Then next is your sealed bid auction. This sealed bid auction is the one in which this increase or decrease of price interactively is not allowed. At a time in a sealed envelope, everybody submit the bid and bid is opened at a particular time. Okay. So, in the case of this sealed bid auction, there are again two varieties. One is a first price auction, another is called a second price auction. In case of first price auction, whosoever is the highest bidder, he is he gets the item with the price he suggests. In case of second price auction, the uh, highest bidder gets the price gets the item, but at the second highest bidder's price. So, which means he gets a price advantage, which is the difference between his own bid value minus the second person's bid value. Then this can be classified based on the preference structure of the buyer or a seller. Now consider, uh, consider a scenario in which you are buying multiple units. So, uh, with when the number of units available is less, you might be willing to pay more. But as you the number of units increase, you may not be uh, willing to pay. So, if you show a decrease in the price, uh, I mean you decrease, you, you, if you find out a decrease in the uh, marginal utility of utility for an additional unit of product offered in case of multi unit auction, you can say you have your utility is changing and you have your preference structure is different for different units. Similarly, uh, your preference can also depend on the kind of attributes besides price offered by the item. By attribute we mean different quality and service let us say some uh, two items you are going to compare. Price is same, but the warranty in one of the items is the warranty period in one of the item is more. Naturally, you will pre prefer the item with higher 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 warranty. Now, prices are different. First item with lower warranty has less price, with higher warranty has high price. Now, you can have your own utility function established. By utility function, we mean a mathematical uh, see after all this evaluation has to take place in the online environment using some kind of function. So, in such situations when you are considering multiple attributes, you should have a methodology for constructing a function which relates all the attributes and finally, this combination is expressed in, in, in some kind of monetary or some kind of other diamonds and diamonds and less. Uh, way it can be expressed by combining everything together. Either it can be priced out, everything is represented in terms of price, including your warranty and, uh, and other quality attributes, or 
everything including your price can be reduced to some dimensionless uh, um, stuff which can be combined together. Then you can also classify based on the bead structure. Okay, what is the bead structure? Now, the structure of a bead defines the flexibility with which an agent, uh, what is an agent here? Uh, in fact, we have been talking about the term agent so many times. The agent is basically the buyer or a seller, the person who is involved in this uh, auction process. So, uh, the structure of a bid defines the flexibility with which an agent can express his resource requirement. Now, in case of single uh, item and single unit auction, the buyer needs to specify the price only. Now, in case of single item multiple unit, the buyer need to specify not only the price, but also the quantity. Now, the bid is price quantity pair. In the first case, it is price only. In the second case, it is a price quantity pair. In case of multiple items, the buyer can specify which items he would like to buy. Let us say 5 items is getting sold. So, the bid structure will be for A, B, let us say 5 items are A, B, C, D, E. For A, B, this is the price. For C, D, if I am buying, this is the price and so on. So, it is the list of items and price. Then, the classification can also be made based on the payment rule. In the auction, the if in a forward auction, consider a forward auction scenario, if the highest the person with who is uh, whose bid is of highest value will definitely getting the item and price of that price that he pays is same as that of your his bid value that is called first price auction. The payment rule is highest bidder gets the item and pays whatever he bids. In the second price auction again the highest bidder gets the item, but he gets but what he uh, pays is the second highest bidder's price. This is also called weak reactions. Now, what, what, why such a strange auction um, uh, that we will be discussing after some times possibly. Then there are auctions which are all pay. Everybody will be paying some amount, some reserve amount just to participate. Then there will be bidding, then the highest bidder will be getting the item. This is your and this is another scenario. Then uh, you can have classification based on matching supply and the demand. So, here depending on the kind of auction there will be different kind of winner determination problem. How a winner has to be decided based on uh, based on the kind of item which is brought, uh, which is getting sold or bought and so on. Now, if, uh, if um, <clears throat> we may decide that we will be buying from only one source or selling to only one source, which means we I have only one item or even in case of multiple items, I will be selling or buying to only one person. Okay, this turns out to be a very simple sorting problem. Then I can decide for multiple sourcing. I can buy from, I have a demand for multi unit items or multiple items and one source is not able to provide me all the items. So, I can buy it from multiple items or if I have many items and one single buyer is not willing to take all of them, I can sell it to a group of people. So, basically this multiple sourcing problems are combinatorial problems and quite computationally hard problems. Then you can have uh, this uh, 
classification based on the feedback mechanism. There will be certain auction mechanisms in which no feedback will be there, those uh, there will not be any feedback. In case of online tendering in using this first price or uh, second price auction, people will be submitting their bid in a sealed en envelope at one go. They do not have any kind of feedback mechanism to change their bid, whatever they submit that is final. Then there are certain uh, auctions like that of English auction where the current highest bid value is known. So, which means this current price signal goes to all the bidders and accordingly they bid. Okay. Then when we talk about online auctions, many issues are involved. First one is your economic issues which basically talks about auction design problem. Then you have uh, business level issues which is about including business rules like, like uh, what should be my um, reserve price, whether I should go for single sourcing or multiple sourcing and so on. There are many implementation issues as well. Uh, framing the corresponding uh, computational problem which is an optimization problem and solving it online is a major issue. Besides that, because the bid values are supposed to be kept secret when this information exchange takes place, security is another issues, issue which is to be dealt with. So, with this we finish this lecture, thank you very much.